Let's learn a very interesting test called KS test, where K stands for Kolmogorov and S stands for Smirnov, two brilliant mathematicians and statisticians. And uh, this is a very interesting test. Let me define, let me tell you what this test is all about. Let's assume I have two random variables, x1 and x2. And let's assume I got n samples, right? Suppose I sampled some data points and I have, let's say, n samples. I have n samples, right? So let's call them x11, x12, so on and so forth, x1n. Suppose I have n observations for your random variable 1. And let's assume I have m observations for my random variable 2. Now I want, I have a very basic question that I want to answer. Are these two random variables x1 and x2 coming from the same distribution or not? Right? So is the distribution of x1 same? Is the distribution, is the distribution of x1 same as x2? This is very, very important oftentimes. For example, let me tell you why this is important. We looked at our petal length, sepal length, all these variables, right? When you're looking at Iris data set, we saw that the shape of these is, well, it, it has sort of like a Gaussian-like shape. But if you want to determine if this distribution is actually Gaussian or not, if I want to do a test to determine if this distribution is Gaussian or not, what I could do is I could take my petal length distribution, normalize it, which means I, I subtract the mean petal length from here and divided by variance of petal length. Right? If this is roughly same as n01, then I know that my petal length random variable has a Gaussian a Gaussian distribution with mu pl as its mean and sigma pl as its standard deviation. Right? Now, this is extremely important test and something that I've used extensively in my own career. And let, let's go ahead and understand what this test is. The test basically says whether two random variables x1 and x2 have the same distribution or not. Let's see, let's see how the test goes. Okay, so first I plot the cumulative probability distribution of both x1 and x2. So this is nothing but your CDF. This is your CDF of x1 and x2. Of course, both x1 and x2 are on the same axis here. So let's assume my red line is the CDF of random variable x1. And of course, x1 has m observations, right? My x1 has x1 has m n observations and x2 has m observations, right? And my blue line is the CDF of, let's say, x2. Now, given these two, I want to determine, so my hypothesis, my so we'll use all the, all the technique that, all the theory that we learned about hypothesis testing. My H0 or my null hypothesis in this test, see, this is a statistical test as the name suggests, right? My null hypothesis in a KS test is that x2 have the same distribution. So my null hypothesis is that they have same distribution or they come from same distribution. That's, that's the null hypothesis. The alternative hypothesis is that they don't come from the same distribution. So we define what our null hypothesis is. Then we have to define a test statistic, right? So what are our steps? First, we have to define a test statistic and we have to define a null hypothesis. We defined a null hypothesis. So let's define a test statistic. The test statistic could be like this. So when I plot my CDF of x1 and my CDF of x2, I could take at any point, at any point here, I could take the difference between these two plots, right? The difference between these two plots at this place is this much. The difference between these two plots at this place is this much. The difference between these two plots at any point x, at any point x, I can get a difference between or how, how separated these two CDFs are. Imagine intuitively that if these two CDFs exactly overlapped, right, then the difference is zero, right? Of course, if you have infinite amount of data, suppose if your n is very large, right, and your m is also very large, right, and if let's say x1 and x2 come from the same distribution, like if n could be let's say a few million or m could be a few billion, right, and if x1 and x2 come from the same distribution, their CDFs would roughly, so let's assume this is the CDF of x1 and let's assume this is the CDF of x2, right? They both, so this is your x standing for x1 and x2 and this is your CDF, right? They would almost overlap, right? When n and m are very large, but when n and m are small, they might have some difference, 
because we only have some observations. We don't have millions or billions of observations, right? So the test statistic in KS test is written as DNM and it's written as, I'll read this, it is a supremum over all Xs of F1X. F1X is nothing but the CDF of my random variable X1 with N samples. F2M is nothing but, it is a CDF of my random variable X2 with M samples, right? Which is nothing but your red and blue lines. So what does supremum mean? Supremum basically means the maximal value, right? So if you take at for various values of X, you'll get this difference. Let's assume this difference is small, this difference and this difference. What is the maximal difference? The maximal difference at any point X between these two, these two plots is this black line, right? So you, this black line becomes your DNN, right? This is your test statistic test statistic, sorry, it's it's a slight tongue twister because there's so many t's and t's, right? So your DNM is a test statistic in your KS test. And what is a test statistic? It is nothing but the gap between your CDFs of random variable X1 and random variable X2. Ideally, if your N is very large, as I just was referring to it earlier, and if your M is very large, right? And if X1 and X2 came from the same distribution, your D, so if your null hypothesis is true, what is null hypothesis being true mean here? It means that your X1 and X2 come from the same distribution. And if N and M are large, then your test statistic would be zero, right? If N and M is large, but your, but your, but your null hypothesis is false, which means X1 and X2 do not come from the same distribution, then D will be greater than zero, right? Then the next question is, okay, this is great. Why don't we just apply our permutation test? So remember, conglomerate spin-off test was is much, much older than modern computation simulations with randomization that we just saw when we learned about permutation test, right? So what people discovered was that your DNM, so that there is actually a closed form to get your p-values, right? Suppose if my p-value, which is represented here with a significance level of alpha, so let's say assume I want a p-value of 0 0.05 or a significance level. Right? My p-value basically means it's a significance level. So let's assume I want a p-value of 0 0.05 and I want to understand when will I reject my null hypothesis or when will I reject my alternative hypothesis. So it says, so this is a closed form and this, this comes from a lot of research from Konglomorov and Smirnov. There, there's a closed form of getting your p-values. So it says that if your DNM is greater than C alpha times square root of N plus M by NM, right? Now, you might ask, what is your C alpha? Let's just go down and see what C alpha is. Okay, so what it says is, there is, there is a table for C alpha. If your alpha is 10% or 5% or 2.5% or 1% or half a percent or one tenth of a percent, there is a value of C alpha. This is called a lookup table, right? So given an alpha, I can look up what the value of C alpha is, right? So after a lot of research, Konglomerov has said that if DNM is greater than this value, so let's assume your alpha is 5%, then your C alpha from this table is 1.36. So if your DNM is greater than 1.36 times square root of N plus M by NM, then you reject your null hypothesis. So let, let's just simplify this, just for simplicity, right? Let's assume your n is large. Let's assume your n is, let's say, 1000. Okay, and let's assume your m is 5000. Okay, let's see what this value turns out to be, right? Um, so I'll just use, uh, I'll simply use Google to our advantage now. Okay, so what we have is, okay, let's just go and Google it up. So what I have is uh, 1.36 times um, square root of n is 1000 plus, sorry, plus m, which is 5000 by 1000 multiplied by 5000. For those of you who, do, who didn't know that we could use Google as a calculator, this is super useful. Oh, did I screw it up somewhere? Uh, I think I should put this also in brackets 
Okay, so now you get a value, right? So going back to our case here, right? So the value that we just got here is 0 0.047. Okay, so let's go back to this and say that if n was 1000 and m was 5000 and if my alpha is 0.5 or my p if i want a significance level of 5% or if i want a, if i want a, a, a p value of about 5% then if my dnm is greater than so let's take this if it's greater than 0 0.047 if it's greater than 0 0.047 then if if my dnm or the gap between my two uh, so or okay let's go up here if this gap, if the maximal gap between my two CDFs is greater than this, then you reject your null hypothesis at 5% significance level, at 5% significance level, right? So look at how small this number is. Because I have large values of N and M, right? At, at for 1000 and 5000, if this gap is even slightly, if the maximal gap this is a very small value, right? Because your CDFs could vary between 0 and 1, right? So even if the gap is as small as 0 0.047, you will reject your hypothesis. Now let's take a slightly different example to understand this concept. What happens if N is 50 and M is 30? Okay, what, what happens to my DNM? Okay, let's let just go back to our Google calculator and compute this. Okay, again at 5% significance level. So this is my 50, this is my 30, and my 50 multiplied by my 30. Okay, Google has a brilliant calculator. I really love this. It's 0 0.31 now, right? So if it is greater than 0 0.31, then you reject your null hypothesis. Now, just by, just by going from 1005, because as you have more points, Okay, this gap should be smaller, right? If I have fewer points, so 0 0.31 is like 30% gap. The gap here is roughly like what? The, the gap here is roughly like uh, 0 0.2, right? The gap here is only 0 0.2. So 0 0.3 gap is massive gap. So if I had only 50 observations for my random variable x1, and if I have 30 observations for my random variable x2, right? And if my d is greater than, 0 0.3, 0 0.30, I will reject my hypothesis. So what happens? So let's assume, let's assume, let's do this exactly. So what I have here is I have a gap of 0 0.2. Let's assume I have 50 observations for x1 and 30 observations for x2. And I reject a hypothesis at 5% significance level. That's important. You should always mention your significance level or p value. So is the value greater than 0 0.31? No, it's not greater than 31. It's less than 31 because your 0 0.2 here is less than 0 0.31. Since your, since your test statistic is less than the threshold that you have, you would say that you would accept H0 at a 5% significance level, right? So in this case, you would conclude if you had only 50 observations from which you drew the CDF and 30 observations from which you drew the CDF, you would say at 5% significance level, you would actually accept, you would actually accept your null hypothesis that both your random variables X1 and X2 come from the same distribution. Right? Very simple. Now you might ask, one important thing is, how did this equation come about? That's that's the fundamental contribution of conglomerate of spin map. The idea is very simple, right? But coming up with this closed form, uh, closed form expression to compute the threshold on your DNM uh, for a given significance value and given your N and M is important.